Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Midsummer Scream. In 2018, Netflix aired The Curious Creations of Christine McCollum, a left that featured a cast of adorably spooky creatures and zany characters. During the show's 18-episode run, fans around the world fell in love with Christine and her unusual ensemble. Her fans remain just as devoted to her twisted creativity today, following her on social media from all corners of the globe. Midsummer Scream is delighted to welcome to the stage, from How I Met Your Mother, King of the Hill, The Office, you know her as Rose and Cousin Abby, Colleen Smith. With credits on such shows as Jim Henson's Creature Shop Challenge, American Horror Story, and Seal Team, production designer for the curious creation of Christy McConnell, Darcy Prevo. From Severus Snape and the Marauders, Kukui the Boogeyman, and Stand Against Evil, you know him as Edgar, Mark Ignis. From the Puppets, Where the Wild Things Are, and Sid and Marty Croft's Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, you know him as Rankle, Michael Ostrom. And she's the lady of the hour, the host and creator of the show, baker and maker extraordinaire. Give it up for Christine McConnell. <laughs> and your moderator for this curious group, Emmy Award winning writer, producer, director, creator, designer, and maker with credits that include Return of the Jedi, E.T., Poltergeist, and Gremlins, please give a warm welcome to the show's co-creator and executive producer, Kirk Thatcher. Thank you. Wow, we filled it. We had no idea. We looked out five minutes ago and it was half full. Nah, people don't really care. Thank you all for coming. This is super exciting. This is probably the only panel that will ever be done for this show because Netflix didn't bring it back. <laughs> Seriously, write, write letters, start a campaign because we all want to do it until we die. Um, which we schedule them would probably be three more seasons and then we'd die. Um, all right, we'll get right into it. Uh, so first, I actually wanted to interview Christine a little bit because I don't even know some of these answers. You have an Instagram account, so two years ago, who approached you and said, hey, let's do a show? Um, is this working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, um, was it two or three years ago? Something yeah. like that? Yeah, I three had, years. Um, decorated my parents' house for Halloween. My mom's right here. And, uh, we should all thank her. Um, anyway, so she let me, she let me kind of wreck her house and it went around the internet. Christine, put the microphone closer to your mouth. Oh, put the microphone closer to your mouth. Oh, closer to my mouth? Yeah. I'm sitting on it. So many jokes I'm not going to make. <laughs> that would be a roast joke there. Sorry, so your mom, you did the Halloween thing, it went around, got a lot of notoriety, and Jess Grimshaw from Wilshire. Yes, um, yes. she messaged me, and I had a lot of people reach out to do a show. Um, but she was the first one that was sort of like, it was NBC, it seemed like, oh, this is exciting. I went and met with her, and we sort of just discussed what kind of show. I knew I didn't want to do a reality show, and she sort of threw a few ideas at me, and then so we sort of just kicked around a few ideas at that first meeting. And then I came back, and she said, would you be interested in working with the Henson people? Almost, I laughed. I was just like, is that a possibility? And she, she's like, I don't know, maybe. We'll like, send them an email. And so we did that, and they met with us right away, and it just kind of. And you guys shot a pilot, where like a yes. test pilot at your actual house. Yes, at my house. Um, that was never aired, but it, in fact, they didn't build any creatures. They used one of the creatures from uh, 
Turkey Hall that I've done yeah, to nice. kind of say what you know to show you working with a creature in your kitchen, and that was like a 20 minute. Something like Something that. Like that. Then I, we set a fire in my living room. And... <laughs> Just never let people shoot in your house, even awesome. if it's about you. No, it was me instigating the fire. <laughs> See, I, I don't even know I don't think we can do that. And I was like, no, watch. You just douse it in, like, lighter fluid. And it'll go up. See, it's that kind of commitment that makes her stuff so fantastic. Um, so that's where I came in, because the Henson Company said, we, we made this test pilot and Netflix is interested. We need a, a, a showrunner to kind of, you know, wrangle everything and work with Christine. And so I met with you, and you're amazing. And I was like, well, she's amazing if she likes me. I was worried you wouldn't like me, because, I mean, look at, I was like a hobo. <laughs> no. A hobo with a yacht. Um, and, and we hit it off, and we started immediately just bouncing around ideas. I mean, she's so creative. I'm going to embarrass you now. She's amazingly creative and incredibly collaborative, which consider considering her Instagram account is all her. You, you, you're the model, you're the director, you're the lighting person, you do everything. So the fact that you could come in and, and work with all of us was amazing. And, and I don't know how much you went home and screamed into the pillow, but you were very, <laughs> it was very easy for us. I was excited. I mean, it's yeah. Wilson. And Greatest artist and, ever. And Kirk Thatcher. I mean, oh, Kirk Thatcher, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just an amazing, amazing thing. And she was so every day was just so exciting to be, you know, on the Henson lot working with. I mean, Brian Henson was there. Yeah, he was executive oh, producer. Super surreal. So we shot in the old Charlie Chaplin stage on the Henson lot in La Brea in Hollywood. And now, well, you guys have all introduced. So what I'm gonna do is start going through. I'm gonna show a couple clips. Because in, in case someone didn't see the show. Has everyone seen the show? Did anyone not see the show? Okay, there's a few. So I'm going to run a couple clips, if this works. Uh, of course it's not going to work. We tried it earlier. Oops, hold on, hold on. There we go. All right, here's the first scene. This is where we meet the creatures. There's a note behind the snack. I'll read it. It's upside down. Do not feed him fish. Don't feed him flesh. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Edgar, there's no need to be frightened. He stinks. Coming from you, that really says something. Right, that's not the truth. He's been through a lot. So he's a what now? To be honest, I'm not really sure. But his name's Edgar, and I don't think we need to worry ourselves over labels. How do you know all of this? Good heavens, it talks! She just no stuff, okay? And she or I see you get one step out of line, there's an incinerator in the basement that will burn you alive. You will do no such thing. I apologize for Rose. Introductions are not really her strong suit. Mm, indeed. Her talents include binging on trash and an insatiable libido with the neighborhood dogs. <laughs> what the hard ones? <laughs> this is our home. And it's a place where the strange, unusual, and Rose yeah. are safe and welcome. Our kind is protected here. Yeah. I was crushed in a garbage truck, and she remade me better. What about you, Squirrel? Or does she make you also? I am a cat! And resurrected would be more accurate. He really was rather pitiful when I met him, just wasting away on a shelf. I was once revered as a god, until some jealous humans buried me alive and cursed me. Years later, I was stolen from my tomb and wound up in an antique shop. Christine was good enough to accurately read the spell in my burial cloth, and now... Here we are. You may worship me if you like. <laughs> you talk too much. All right, that's, that's enough chatter. Edgar? There we go. So, this is so nice. We know, you know, you've spent, you've spent in edit bays and you've thrown out to Netflix, and, but it's really nice to get the applause. So you just saw the work of everyone here. Um, uh, do you guys have any, I'm just going to roll through, but if you have anecdotes or something about shooting that scene. Um, I have. Yeah, please. So when we first, when they let me first see the show for the first time, this scene 
was the scene that let me know that I'm a bad actress. Not true. I'm sure some of you were looking at that going. Roseanne Barr was a bad It was like, well, maybe they'll be funny enough. In the first season, in the first season. No, I think you were great. We were, you know, we knew you weren't an actress, but you playing you and your sweetness comes right through, right? Yeah. 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 You're a sweet demeanor. I'm sure. And so I, I was never worried. I thought you play you really well, much better than any of us. <laughs> what, I've what I've explained to people who, who are watching the show is that that is Christine and the character on the show, Christine McConnell, are the same person. Yeah. So exactly. you being able to act as, you know, as natural and smooth as you will with the characters, like you're not putting on a character for this. That's literally you, how you would be in your house with these creatures. With the werewolf. Yeah. Acting yeah. badly. <laughs> you just want us to go, no, you're a no. Oh, no, no, no. Um, one other funny thing, and again, just pull up stuff when I notice it. So you notice Edgar is a mouth breather, right? He's like, ah, ah. Which, which worked for the character, where it's also the only way Mick could see out of that suit. <laughs> There's a picture later, you'll see his view of the world, which is a tiny little slot with fangs hanging over it. But, um, so we had to actually deal with that throughout the show, because if his servos were on, you heard So we had to shoot all the scenes twice, one with his head turned off, so he's just So we've had to add all this breathing, which I don't know. It, it's funny because, again, it works for the characters like they have. It's, it's, you know, the, the show is absolutely gorgeous and it was amazing to see for the first time on Netflix when it came out for me because I saw nothing the entire time. Right, yeah. Show. We saw this. It was, it was basically like this, this small smidgen of space when his mouth was fully open, but otherwise I'm looking at like a bunch of servo monitors and gears and hearing like cranking in my ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had my partner Drew Massey, who um, is- Who's not his, here. Yeah, he's not here because he's taken an oath of silence and is living in a Tibetan monastery, <laughs> um, But uh, I had an earpiece and him to communicate with him so he could tell me where my eye line was, because my Edgar's eyes are like on top of my head, and my eyes are facing nothing but servos. So I, I have somebody literally guiding me around like I'm blind the entire time, making sure that this giant fur suit doesn't hit any open flames and candelabras, which my right. is very happy in. So thankfully, I didn't burst into flames. Thank God, because we didn't have an extra suit. Um, so. You know, we have a raccoon with a bow and a talking cat and a werewolf. We wanted to make sure, and even Christine and I first met, we didn't want to be, everyone's like, oh, it's like Pee Wee, but we're like, but it's not cute. It's cute and creepy. You, you said it best, you said, I want to be Donna Reed as a serial killer. That's the character she wanted to play, which to me, I'm like, got it, run with that. So this next clip sort of shows that side of the show. What is going on down here? <laughs> Mr. Ketchup? <laughs> are awful. Uh, it wasn't my idea. These two made me do it. But I've got to say, it's really heartwarming seeing all of you working together for once. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the weighted blade. Oh, thanks. I conceptualized it. But the blade isn't secured properly. Uh -huh. What? My designs are beyond reproach. If anything is wrong, it's because that babbling behemoth over there in the corner is illiterate. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna help you all, yeah. but safety first. Now let's see how this thing works. <laughs> we stole this from the pit of the You really want to push those banana splits back a week? You are not the Christine I once knew. Not entirely. I do think we should kill him. With kindness. Oh, that takes so long. <laughs> Mr. Ketchum, I apologize for this little misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? You were all trying to kill me. I'm trying to this minute. They're all happy. I am going to report this den of horrors to the police and to the FBI. And, and I am keeping this ball game. Not for myself, but for my for friends. 
to finally stop by for a visit. I was kidnapped! <laughs> I'm sorry about that, and for the attempted murder. Can I make it up to you with a gift? You think a gift basket is gonna make up for trying to kill me? Yeah. No, I made them for all the neighbors. Here, try a candy apple. This is insanity! You should try one. Try one, or I'll put it in your belly the hard way! Mr. Ketchum, here's a little penicillin. There's no telling where that ball gets then. Ball After all your hard work, she didn't even say thank you. What are you gonna do? Who wants ice cream? Oh, yeah. So I love that clip because a lot of that was improv. Uh, some of it was improv in the read-through. That, that the amazing thing about casting these guys and gals to be the creatures is they're so fun. They're all improv uh, artists. So I think, uh, oh, that takes so long is the proudest moment of my career. It is. I, I take credit for it every time. No, I don't. I, I, uh, I improvised that in the first table read, and then we had a second table read, and there was a typo, and that line had been given to Edgar, and I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, that was a typo. My line. That's my line. Um, and then, <laughs> just Colleen's little bits as Rose, you brought her so much life. Like, ah! I mean, it, the, the show was filled with it, but I, I really wanted to point that out, because uh, a lot of television comedies come from, you know, you write the script, and you're on set, and then you hire amazing talent, and, uh, and they just make it, they plus it up. Nobody ever made it worse, it was always funnier. And what was especially sort of easy for us on this show was because Colleen and I and Drew, who's in Tibet apparently, <laughs> we are all part of the Henson Improv show, Pup It Up. Right. And we've been doing that, we've been doing that for over 10 years now. So when we first showed up on set, and we also all worked, the three of us worked on another show called No You Shut Up on Fusion. Yeah. <laughs> It's on YouTube. So we kind of start with the script and then we immediately start to goof around with it. So we were off to the races from day one on this one. Yeah. Um, That's why we hired you. There was a consent joke in it that Rose was basically a rapist. Um, I and, you were, yeah. and I told her. Yeah, yeah, people were like Kirk, you know, it's like. It's, or I told Christine I wasn't comfortable making Rose a rapist. I would have liked better like them. I know. Uh, so we changed it that she had a consensual relationship with right. dogs and Mr. Grumbles. Uh, Actually, the but because of that, we had to change the ball gag joke. Right. And Christine was so sad, and my dad like, had to workshop jokes so we could keep it the penicillin thing in. And then we figured out that it was instead of Rose giving someone an STD <laughs> through non-consensual sex, that the ball gag. Uh, <laughs> STD. Remember, it's a cooking show. So. Yeah, it's a perfect show. But it's not Pee Wee's play. All right. Now I'm going to burn through just a bunch of photos. This was, uh, everyone asked about where the creatures came from, the Henson Creature Shop. That was the first drawing of Rose. And so uh, I, I would work with the designers and I said, no, it's got to be more of a mess. And the fork's got to be bent and filthy. Um, Edgar started out more bear like, and I said, no, just for mechanical reasons. Uh, so he became that. And uh, Rankle, <laughs> Rankle is basically, I'm all, I love cats, I've grown up with cats, and that personality to me is what a cat is like. And I thought Sphinx cats looked like mummified cats. So I said, all right, he's gonna be a mummified cat from Egypt. Was worse. That, that whole backstory was just my stupid imagination going, this is what a cat thinks, he's the king of the world. And so it, that was the, uh, the, the kind of the body drawing, and that was the uh, close up with those eyes. And then we went to clay sculpts, so I'll burn through these. And then, so this is Rose, started with just white fake fur, and then, if you notice, uh, let me see, does this go back? Yeah, no teeth, no eyes. You add teeth and eyes, suddenly there's a raccoon. It doesn't look like a Muppet anymore. And uh, the creature shop, now she's starting to really become Rose and starting to look much more real with the whiskers and everything. And here's Rankle and Clay, and then Rubber, and then his eyes, and this just makes me laugh. <laughs> this is Rankle without his face. 
The only two things that moved on him mechanically that Michael controlled were his eyes, eyebrows, and his mouth. Yeah, let me take a second to give credit. Uh, all of Frankel's body movements were puppeteered by Tim Legassi, yeah. who's a fantastic we'll, puppeteer in his own right. We'll see yeah. pictures of Tim, yeah. So Tim and Drew are not here and deserve a round of applause, yeah. but we'll tell them nobody cared. Um, well, Tim's a New Yorker we're gonna show. So here's Rankel getting put more together. There he is, finished. And now he could never leave that black platform, which became a pain in the neck for Darcy, which you will hear about, because he wasn't mobile. He was basically, his butt was glued to the ground. And I, I wrote into the story, which he never actually explained, that he just magically appears from here to there because he's magic. He's a semi-ghost. Here's Edgar's head getting sculpted. There's Mick with the mechanical part on. So that's what he was wearing minus all the fur. Now, he has a video of this, and I couldn't find it, so I apologize, but um, the eyes and the mouth and the snarls work, and here's the head without the eyes yet. There it is, and here's the body almost finished without an arm, and there it is the first time Mick wore it at the creature shop. There's Edgar, I mean, sorry, there's uh, Bernard, who is essentially a wall of fur with two eyes that blinked, and there's his paw, and there's Millie, the refrigerator tentacle. <laughs> All right, so now, production designers like to say, Darcy, you have a dollar in three weeks to create a magical world. That's not too far off. And Christine, you have a very specific look you wanted. Yeah, I then came to the house and sort of checked everything out and... By going to her house and checking everything out, she's not mentioning that I also basically stole everything from her <laughs> house. Uh, one of my favorite moments on set, I think Christine was pretty exhausted at this point, we're looking at the bedroom set, and she goes to me, I have pillows just like that. And I was like, Christine, those are your pillows. I took, I took them from your house. So oh, we all okay. went all in. Um, and there, see, there's the two ladies responsible for the look of the show. Christine and Darcy. So it was actually a very, a very pro feminist show. We had a lot of department heads. Our, our DP was a woman. Our first camera assistant, you're, you're still a woman, as far as I know. Christine, yep, Just lots of women. So we're very forward. And there's the, the glamorous job of working in the art department. She's on the business end of a dead raccoon cake. So this was Christine's concept art. Now, when did you do that? Because I this went straight to Darcy. Um, I just mocked it up in Photoshop, and I kind of had this idea for these spiderweb cabinets. Um, and I kind of just assumed anything I sent them was just going to be a reference <laughs> and not an actual you recreation. You don't know Darcy Prima. Ex exactly. That was, I think, um, if you guys don't know Darcy's work, it's just mind-blowing how talented she is. Well, we're getting right to it. So this oh. is the model she made. Out of, what is that? Cardboard? Just Cardboard. illustration board, mat board. So, this, board. I love this. That is the set she designed on the actual set, and we have this fun little video that she and Drew Massey made. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and I got to keep that. She yeah, gave it to me. That was a parting gift. It's so that's just kind of fun, but it shows the amount of talent we had on this show. There's the kitchen set, there's a couple, there's just some pictures of the amazing set that was built. There's the reverse, which is the table where the creatures would sit. There's the bedroom we were talking about. Well, the thing, the thing not everybody knows is, with our very limited budget, we had big ideas for what we wanted the show to be, but then uh, a more realistic budget for how we could make that happen. And so the sets that you're looking at, even though they're our own, are actually recycled from Parks and Rec and Hairspray Live and the Mulaney Show. So we got to kind of there was like puzzle a, pieces together and then redesign them into our own Like world. a set doc at NBC or, uh, sorry, at uh, Universal? Where's NB, it? NBC. NBC. So we, we cobbled together all the sets, or Darcy did. And anyway, this is one design she did that I love. We, we'd written this thing that Christine, for uh, Rose's birthday, gives her this present that's all a mystery, and it's unwrapped, and it's this dumpster cradle, crib, <laughs> with your name on it. In fact, one of the last things we shot was this sweet scene where she gets her own axe. <laughs> There's the bedroom. There's the axes. I love that Christine's like, I want to decorate with axes. Well, I also wanted like handcuffs yeah. on the bed, and they were like, uh -uh. Yeah, well, they, we, we had to fight over the ball gag. Because yeah. it can't just be a gag. I said, well, ball gag's just a gag. Go, yeah, but it's 
I'm like, what? What makes it? It's a gag. I said, well, little kids. I said, kids will just think it's a gag. It's, there's nothing particularly inappropriate about a ball gag, except if you've used one before. <laughs> You're the pervert, not the viewer. Um, yeah, but then you, then you push the ball gag further the day of. It's just like, it's not quite perverted enough yet. But oh, yeah, to the penicillin, yeah. So that was the fun of making the show. Here's our amazing living room. Now, Darcy, you built that wall. Yeah, that, that wall was all custom. We, we did get to create a few unique pieces that yes, weren't we, stolen from other Actually, shows. yeah. Well, yeah. and the chair, right? That, that green chair? Yeah. So there was two of them, and one of them had the, in, it was gutted inside, right. so, so we could have Rose or whoever so, yeah. sitting in it, and nobody told me that. And I, <laughs> oh, that was yours? Yeah. You didn't hear me scream that day? I like, like I I walked onto it, and I was like, sit down here, and I just... Oh, I do remember that. I looked like I was in a trash room. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of uh, physical threats on puppet sets. Here's the amazing portrait that Darcy... That, that was uh, drawn by the very talented artist Brandon Kenny. I'm sure some of you know him. He does lots of conventions. And uh, we just sent him some roughs, and he kept sending digital designs back, and I think it's a beautiful piece. There's a finished piece, which I love. She's, it looks sort of like Bewitched meets the R show. I love that, that style. Did you, did you, who have, you have a print of that. I do, Darcy. I want to, I want to get a print of that. Anyway, right. I'll sign it for me. Um, <laughs> this was, so not only did Darcy have to build our sets, she then had to decorate them for various holidays. So this was Halloween, our staircase. This was Rose's birthday party. Now another, we don't have the people here that made the uh, confectionery and everything uh, per Christine or with Christine's, because uh, <laughs> that was another thing. So you would shoot and then go home and make stuff. Yeah, and in, in the initial plan, the entire table was gonna be covered in nothing but cool, weird, artistic ideas, and I, draft up, I drafted up everything. And the idea was we were gonna have culinary help yeah. That I could sort of say, we need this thing, and I would draw it out, and they would sort of make it, and it was harder to find people that could... Well, that are your level of quality. Also, you worked a 14-hour day, and then to go work with the culinary department for three or four hours, you would have gotten... You barely got all the sleep in. I don't think... I think it went like three days solid yeah. without sleeping, so, and you can tell by how bloodshot I get <laughs> progressively. So when you look at her acting, you see that's not only her, that's her exhausted. Let's blame it on that. This is the amazing. This this one blew me away because everything else. Oh, that's a cool cake. It's called. This was insane. That's chocolate. Um, like a tea set. Tea set. That's actually real chocolate, and that's the real thing. We didn't fake that. So we had this amazing crew. This makes me laugh. It's our dungeon set. But what's funny is we. That's not a set. That's set dressing. That's the actual corner of the soundstage. We realize it's dirty and brown and covered in chicken wire and 800 years of film gack and smoke. So we just. Put the table and the and the shelves I up. Had, and some I designed a set. I know. I just had, but, to, I mean, there was I no had to cut it to afford a fourth person in my department. So we just shoved everything in the corner of the chaplain soundstage, and I think it looked better than it worked. Set. And we could shoot up. <laughs> the ceiling was forty feet high. Um, that's the weird thing that Christine described in the script. And Darcy made it. And, as I say, and Darcy made it. So it wasn't just sets. She had to make props and that actually this, worked. Yeah, it this actually was a, dispensed coffee. Yeah. So, she deserves a round of applause for pulling all this. And she tweaked Mr. Brumbles. All right, now we go into production, some fun pictures from that. That's the crew. That's everyone who made the show, minus Drew Massey, who's not here anyway, so. So people ask, is that from the actual set or from the show? That's from the show, but sometimes it felt like that on set. There they are, all dressed up at the tea party. I love Rose. There's Mick. That's what, he, that's what his day job was. That's Team Edgar. That's Drew, the guy who worked his face, did his voice, the kind of deep very lady. Um, that was Drew. Um, it's funny, because in real life, he looks like he's a 12-year-old boy. But he can do this real deep voice. So yeah, that was Team Edgar. And there he is with Mr. Catch, and we did not hurt him. Stephen Porter. Who we love so much, we're like, we're bringing him back next season. Like, he, he should be. He was supposed to die, and then they yeah. were like, don't kill him. Yeah, they're supposed to actually kill him. They're like, well, they're going to bury him in the yard. Like, oh, we, we love him. We want to bring him back. Um, that's what we're talking about. That, is, that was Mick's view of the world. So, and then act. 
and pick up props and sit in chairs and go through doors. You, you might have seen like that, that shot we showed at the beginning where Edgar does a very simple task of walking over and just pulling a lever up. That is so difficult to do smoothly when you do not know what's in front of you and have this huge werewolf face like in front of you. And you're wearing like boxing gloves with claws. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, like some things you can't really grip and everything. So just doing that simple shot of walking through a wall and throwing a lever inside this massive couch that you're wearing is, uh, yes, is, right. is, is a challenge. And that was the first day of shooting too. Yes, so here's, I love this, this two photos. Here's Mitt, when we're not shooting, we don't have enough time to pop the head, and so after about two seconds, he looks like this. <laughs> I titled this, The Loneliest Werewolf in the World. How, how, much, does the, I, I, how much does the head weigh? The head weighs like, oh, what, like 20, 18 pounds, 15 pounds. It's something like that on, you know, on the front of your, you know. It's got like six head motors head. and fiberglass and glass eyes and like, tongue and teeth and hair. Um, and here's Team Rankle. There's Michael. And the other half of Team Rankle who's not here, Tim Legasse, who always moved when the tail's wagging, when his paws are moving. Um, did he do the head left? He did the body up and down the head. Yeah, he did all the body movement. You did the, the eyes face and, and the voice. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little clip here of what that's that looks like. Uh, so that's so. That's, this is funny. This is Michael. So yeah, I get to sit in a chair like this and just eat bonbons and, and look at a monitor. And then Tim has to crawl under. Things. Tim's crammed with ah, his arms under. <laughs> <laughs> or stuffed under a table. But this is what it, this is kind of fun. This is what it looks like when we're shooting. So he's hearing the dog. News, I can only imagine what you have in mind. What's happening? He's hearing production in his ears. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. That's what's saying. It's kind of tricky. His picture is tiny. Yeah, it was pretty small. Oh, it's not a only she saw you got yeah. And then he, I'm like, Michael, do this. Michael, do the thing. Yeah. Can't hear you, Kirk. <laughs> Can't hear you, Kirk. Can't hear you, Kirk. Um, but anyway, that's how difficult it is. He's, he's doing that. Tim's moving the body. And uh, so it's not an easy job. There's Team Rose. Aww. There's Polly. It's too bad she wasn't a popular character. We thought a trash eating panda who fornicated or everything is made out of garbage and dead animals. Would be um, a hit. Real quick, um, obviously, I put effort into how I look today, but my hair is still like flat and wispy, so that glorious hairstyle <laughs> is not how I looked on set. Well, uh, I had a, a Christmas party to go to, a celebrity Christmas party, um, and the theme was uh, like winter western or something like that. So uh, the hair and makeup department, as a total favor to me, in between everything, like did up my hair and did my face and all that kind of stuff. So I looked great at that part. <laughs> so that was the posed photo. This is normally what she looked like. <laughs> Either laying on the floor, okay, help, you're six foot one? Yeah. And of course we gave her the one puppet that has to run around the sets. So she's usually laying on her back, inclined a little bit, you'll see in this next picture. There she is with Tim, who would very often work the tail or help out with the hands. He was our puppet captain. There, there she is in a set that actually had a high thing to hide behind, which is the, the scent, the kitchen island. But super not glamorous and, uh, and but now, here's the other thing. She plays three characters in the series. She plays Rose as a puppeteer. She played Cousin Evie, Evil Cousin Evie, which there's her attitude right there. And there she is in the show. And they, she also played the dead grandmother. <laughs> so you can see her hand isn't that bad, but we had to make it up. And then, then you were shoved under this set. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, how glamorous. See, so we shoved her under that set, and there's a little hole in the grass that she came up through, and, I think grabbed the brandy bottle from Christine. <laughs> so these are our sets, just small, like 12 by 12s, covered in grass and some blue screen. Um, there she's dead when we <laughs> killed Cousin Evie at the end. I just want to tell a quick story about yes. that. Yes. Um, so Cousin Evie's getting buried, right? And um, so they, they literally shovel dirt, and there's like prop dirt. It's dirt. Um, they shovel <laughs> dirt on top of me. And I, I'm so mad because my whole idea when Evie came back is I was just wearing my the underwear stuff, all the like support, uh, you know, spanks and bras and stuff. But in the shot, you can't tell. But I walked around in like underwear and an open, insane asylum gown that no one could tell. 
But, so I'm lying down in the dirt and everybody else has surgical masks on to protect themselves from the, the evil dirt that will like destroy their lungs and I just have to lie there and have to just shovel it. Yeah, it turned out the asbestos dirt was super cheap for yeah. some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, they say it takes years to show up. Anyway, uh, so that's our, our grave, is two walls and some grass cloth and uh, some chopped up Barty, Barty parts? Body parts, Ermiger and Birdie boots. Um, <laughs> And this is just some production photos. Here we are doing the amazing seance, uh, the Ouija board, which we couldn't, we went to call it talking board. We could, Ouija is actually a copyright. Yeah, term. exactly, so it's the talking board. Talking that's the board. original name. Right. It, so. But that's yeah. a cookie. She made that as a cookie, which she shows a little bit in the show. But we realized she made one, and then we had to break it. So we actually go, oh, we can't, we're not shooting in order, because you never do. So we were like, what do we do, what do we do? I said, go make a color Xerox of it. And we put that on foam core, and that's what we used to shoot the scenes before we actually broke it, because we can only break it once, because it was exactly. a little bit So that was a panicked... Uh, it worked out. It did. Here's uh, Millie. One shot we have of Millie. There's Tim and Michael working with a big tentacle. That's where I would sit when we were filming. Because <laughs> we had to move fast, so you couldn't, like, redress the set. You kind of had to keep it so I would sit there often, because Millie let me. Um, we didn't always work hard. We had hat day. <laughs> was fun and then I got to work with a beautiful actress that I Dita Monti, she came in for two hours, did all her scenes, but she was the only beautiful actress I got to work with. I also got to work with Lucille! And that's my first cameo. I'm Lucille's voice. And you, Christine. That was me. And then my other cameo was the mad doctor who takes Evie away for about three seconds at the end. So that was... If you watch it again, and you know, I'll show them right Netflix letters saying we want more Mad Doctor. Um, it's a breakout role. Yes, exactly. I broke out when I played him. Um, and here's a little more production. This is a standard day. Uh, I love just mix there with his hat and, or head and hands off. And we're all crammed around in this actual... None of our walls could move. That was another thing. We didn't have the money to make moving walls. So we were, it, sorry. No, not you. <laughs> well, what's amazing is it worked, but it actually made people thought we shot in her house or a house because... You can't get those perfect movie cinematic angles. Um, this is one of the last scenes in the show when we revive Rose, which... Oh, came... wait, go back. Yep. Uh, that fork is a real fork, and it kept flopping down and, like, cutting me. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a, a Amanda made, uh, who's a oh, puppet right. builder, and... The fork cozy. Uh, she made, a, like, a fork marshmallow cozy <laughs> thing, and we'd be like, where's her... Where's your cozy? Yeah, because yeah, I kept I getting about. injured by that. I, I literally remember uh, Alana Sawin, who was working on the Rose Puppet, had like a set from Target that she got that she was just going out with a pair of pliers just to make it gnarled enough for, for yeah. her to have sort of beforehand. <laughs> so this was the last scene in the show, because we're coming down to this. The last scene was an ad lib that we pulled from another shot. It was. Uh, we'd just seen Evie buried, and Rose had been reanimated, and I just thought we'd kind of almost end the show with this. And also, this is the house, which I didn't have any other pictures of. Ah! Jack, Jack! <laughs> <laughs> just makes me laugh every time. So here's the last scene we actually shot, and the last day of shooting was that sweet scene between Christine and Rose, where she tucks her in her little garbage bin with her axe. And Darcy actually had the presence of mind to film this. So this is what it looks like. 40 people watching two people. As you can see, most of our sets were three walls. I can't believe I thought you replaced me as if perfection happens twice. <laughs> All right. That's everybody again. Deserve a round of applause. We're going to work on it. And we end with Mr. Grumbles. All right. Well, you guys want to do questions from the audience? Because I don't know. Yeah, let's, see what let's do Q&A. Will you bring the lights up and get... Uh, certainly, your hand went up first. The man in the white shirt. Is there a white bat with a microphone? There you go. Keep standing up, sir. And then... Uh, okay, I'll get you next. We'll kind of go back and forth, but... So questions for anybody? I know they'll all be for Christine, but I'm just being mean. <laughs> if, you guys, oh, if you guys were to do a season two, I guess what direction would you guys like to go in? 
More murder? More murder. We talked about it. We thought, we said the opening should be the house on fire, burning down. They're all standing outside. The house is burning down, and it's somehow due to Rose. I know. And we wanted to much. do a whole new set. We and that's, set. We, we kept dreaming about how designing our perfect house in the second season that we got to design and build from the ground up. And everybody said, well, how can you justify a new house? And we're like, we have a raccoon that's prone to arson. <laughs> Rose burns the first house down. It's fine. Well, and I, I think the premise was like, maybe she got mad that we missed her bar mitzvah. Yeah. And then after she burned by yeah. the office, we could explode. Oh, I think it would be, be a bat mitzvah for you. I kind of wanted the house, because your own house, you do eyes and a mouth. I'd like your house to just get up and leave. <laughs> That's a great well, idea. It's funny, because we had a ton of ideas for season one. You, Christine sent me like 13 episodes with dragons and swamp creatures, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be awesome, and then they showed us the budget. We're like, oh, we get three creatures, and they have to be recurring. There was going to be a Bigfoot wedding. Yeah. Like, no, her mind is fantastic. So fun to work with because you just you just kept getting bigger and bigger. But that, I was yeah, gonna so. make her a wedding dress yeah. and a cake. I was hoping I'd get to be on camera in season two as a food critic. Yeah, of the house murders. Well, we want yeah we wanted you and Mick and Drew all to be on camera as characters because that way we didn't have to pay pay someone. <laughs> okay. I you think I'm joking? Uh, yes, sir. You have the, yes. Thank you so much for actually blending the Muppetry, the uh, horror, and the cooking genres all together in one shot. Um, so you have to ask, who came up with the idea of breaking that fourth wall up? Who's she talking to? Kirk? That was her. Well, we didn't want it to be too much of a real cooking show, because like, obviously it's not. So I said, what if they think she's crazy? Like, the, the reality of the show is, she knows it's a show, but they don't. So, again, that was like two meetings with executives, like, wait a minute. <laughs> so she talks to the camera, which they got, but they don't talk to camera. Like, no, they're the reality of the show. She breaks it, but they think she's crazy. But thank you for noticing. Kirk, I always thought in season two it would be great if we did a thing where you're at the counter and then we're in the doorway just watching you talk to the empty space. <laughs> yeah, just going, so, good. Oh, that's so weird. Maybe she just lack of oxygen at birth. <laughs> um, yes, you may be in the middle there. Christine, I know that you do a lot of your own clothing design and sewing, and yeah. I was wondering if you were actually able to wear any of your own dresses during the show. Oh, yeah. Actually, I would say my initial plan was to make everything I wore in the show, and then that didn't work. <laughs> so I was able to go to like the Universal lot and like go sort of rifle through stuff and find things that looked right or fit right. Um, but I would say maybe 60% of it was my own clothes that I had made myself. Um, I'm super tall, so you finding- You I love this, there's, <laughs> she's so funny. There's the scene where she comes down the stairway for uh, her date, when uh, Adam, who plays- uh, Norman. Norman, yeah. Sorry, it's been two years and I drink a lot. Um, <laughs> Norman shows up and we did this long old thing with the hair and she's all pushed up and looks sexy as hell. And we watched it and she's like, oh, you're gonna cut that out, right? I asked the four guys in the editing room, like, doesn't she look gorgeous? They're like, uh, yeah, she looks gorgeous and it's hot. So it's just so funny that you're like, ew, no, ew. That was ew. one of my notes. I was like, I don't, I know what we were going for, yeah, but I just got. don't think it got pulled no, off. It did. Trust me. <laughs> right right there. All right, next question. Where are we going? You're right here in the front row. I'm a huge fan of your show, so this is such a privilege. Um, if it's okay with everybody, can we hear the characters once more? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Well, I already did the seal, so. I can't remember any of the lines. It was two years ago. Uh, Just, you may worship me if you like. <laughs> Well, I know the one that I think people like the most, so everyone just like prepare your ears because I have a microphone, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is there anything else? Like, we could just. Oh, okay. you just improv. You guys are improv artists. You're like, oh, I don't know any lines. Sorry, another loud one. Uh, that some executive didn't like Rose because she was too screechy. Yeah. Um, oh, like, yeah. Why can't we just be mean to each other? Oh, yeah. uh, I want, um, I'm going to be talking about, uh, after I leave, I'm going to go get a strawberry lemonade. 
because uh, I've just been sitting up here and my blood sugar is getting low, and I don't know how long I'm supposed to just sit here and watch Kirk do pictures of bullshit. Ooh, just do what you always do. Just roll around in your own filth. You're good at it. I will. I will. That was good. Thank you, that was a great question. Hi, as another fan of the show, I want to ask Christine, where do you derive for inspiration? I know that you're very creative and you create a lot of things and you're amazing and we love you. Oh, so. <laughs> but, um, is this something that you've always had from childhood? Like, where do you derive your creativity from? Um, I don't, is anyone here familiar with the Addams Family Values movie? <laughs> Debbie Jelinski is essentially <laughs> everything I've ever wanted to be, except burning down my parents' house. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of like, that's been a big thing. My dad always, um, when he talked about women that were pretty, they were always women from the 50s. Um, so that was kind of an inspiration on that front. And then my mom was always outside, like, did you? Like digging trenches wearing pearls. And so she was kind of this like hyper feminine person that she like. Burying people? The what? Was she burying people? She, I'm not allowed to say. But, <laughs> um, but basically, she was just kind of, she was always using power tools. She's a general contractor. So it's kind of this person that had this incredible like um, impact on me that you can do anything you want and wear excessive blush at the same time. <laughs> Inspiring generation of Wonder Woman. Right, Stand up, mom. The woman who made the woman who made the show. All right. Yes, we have a question back here. Uh, okay, over there. You're waving. Well, I'm. I'm very happy. There's so many questions. We don't know what's talking about. So you guys make a lot of really cool and tasty looking things on the show. Did you guys get to actually taste any of the foods? Nothing. I didn't get to eat anything. <laughs> I had a piece of the, the chocolate tea set we each got a bite of, I think. I got a piece of Ouija board. Yeah, I got a Ouija board. board. Yeah, oh yeah, Ouija board was the only one that we, we got yeah. pieces of. But I, I remember there, like there's, union. there's one shot where Edgar eats like a bunch of those uh, peanut butter white chocolate bones. Oh, right. And after I was done with that, I went and I'm like, oh, I bet I can eat this now. And <laughs> somebody from the food department stops me and is like, you don't want to know what we've been doing with that all day. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, there have been at least five hands on this and other right. things to keep it. Because because they all they all smell amazing, but they also have to last. The right, so they'll be lacquered. Like, there is a funny story about the Ouija board. My assistant, Elko, do you guys remember this? The Ouija board, the, the clear coating on it made it look glossy. And yeah, candy glass. It's candy glass, but he had a digestive problem with it. And he ate half, he, it was gingerbread, so it was delicious, covered in sugar, so he ate a bunch shortbread. of Shortbread. What's that? Shortbread, Did sorry, shortbread. Sure. And I didn't worry about it. I knew it was covered, I didn't really know. But he ate a bunch of it and got, he had to leave the set for the rest of the day because of, I didn't make that cookie. No, I know. You didn't. But. The, the most torturous one by far, though, was the chocolate tea set. That was great. Inside of Edgar's head, I could smell the chocolate oh. wafting oh. inside. And it just sit there like, it sounds like Edgar is panting inside of that, but that is me drooling. <laughs> All right, let's do some. There we go, in the middle, right here with the beard. Just I'm trying to spread it out, guys, so it's not. Uh, hi. Big hi. fan. Love what you guys have done. Um, it's funny because guys like me don't really watch cooking shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, me um, neither. I do watch Cupcake Wars and the Halloween Wars when it's on, you know, Halloween uh, season. And when I saw your show on Netflix, I said, oh, this looks interesting. And I loved it. I uh, wondered if maybe you guys have thought of pitching it to a. Uh, Another network, or even doing YouTube, YouTube uh, channels, stuff like that, because I'm pretty sure people would totally, totally subscribe. Yes. <laughs> well, go ahead. She has a YouTube show and a Patreon account that she's doing. <laughs> but it's really just you. It's not the show because it's kind of owned by Henson and Wilshire, I guess. Henson Wilshire Netflix. So. To answer your question, I 100% would love oh, to. Oh, we all wanted to. Oh my God, it was so much fun. I absolutely fell in love with these people that were so hilarious to work with. 
Um, so if there, I'm, I'm not closing the door on anything. If even if I'm like an 80 year old lady and it gets picked up one day, oh, then I'd be dead. Uh, <laughs> and maybe that's what you want. You should watch it. She takes, she transforms a couch and like oh, yeah, the first it's, not, it's not just big goods. And we've already discussed a cameo. A cameo. So. <laughs> Like the puppet ball, just yeah, you know. Unless you're the new call her Roz. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we talked. It, the hints and the, there's all the politics that we're not involved with. Why it's not been picked up or sold somewhere else, and we we're not privy to why. But we all want it, and you know, send cards and letters. Uh, I'm sure everybody here wants it too. So I think uh, that's a smart idea. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, we do need a good morning. Uh, sure. Go in the back. Wave it. Uh, wave your hand. Wave the, You're looking back behind you. You. The glasses. Yes. Waving your hand. Sorry. And real quick before then, if we did have a second season, I think I would love to incorporate all that gorgeous furniture design that Christine oh, yeah. has been doing and producing. I, it could Problem is we need nine months of pre-production to have her make everything. <laughs> and they don't usually pay for that. Yeah. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, also a big fan of the show. Um, Christine, it's good to see you again. I met you in front of, uh, an, on October, um, on during Halloween when you had your parents' home all decorated. Okay. Um, so my question is actually about Norman, because you mentioned him earlier, like, how was it like working with the actor and the character, where did you come from? I, I love how perfectly he fits with the show and kind of how they're like not really sure of him, but at the same time he's like a perfect fit for everybody. So I'm curious what, how that kind of, yeah. I mean, we, we had a casting session. We probably looked at 20 different people. You wanted someone tall. I wanted someone tall, but not that good looking. Well, okay. it's true. You wanted Adam Driver. You said I, that type. Adam Driver, something weird, like right. Lurch. Like, so we, yeah. Well, no, someone you're like, yeah. Like you, you Michael know, Shannon was kind of like right, the dream Michael guy. Shannon. But, you know, the kind of budget and schedule, everything. So we all thought, I remember we saw Adam. He was great. He was like, oh, it's too good. He looks like a frat guy. But then... <laughs> He, he, he's he's great. very creepy at, at being like the like a Ted Bundy. He was basically Ted Bundy. He was the super good looking guy who worships Satan, up, and he was great at improv oh, and is. playing with this. So it was kind of it was funny. He's really like, don't trust your instincts always. And he did this great read, but even then he was still like kind of frat guy. But when he came on set and clicked and brought all this, like the whole thing where he holds the knife up and he's going, he actually went and found some Latin from satanic verses in Latin. And he was kind of mumbling, before they come in, he's spooked when they show up. So he brought a lot, he had a blast. He was, he was when he's not shooting our show, because he wasn't in every episode, he was a car repossessor. So he has stories like, okay, this guy, because he looks like, you know, he, his name's Biff and he, his dad owns a yacht. Um, but he was great, but it was through casting and he just clicked and we were very happy to have him. Yeah, yeah okay, let's do one. Uh, I haven't done it over there. You and the red, the red bun. I think that's a bun, yeah. <laughs> yeah I do. You, have a, you have a magnetic coil in your head. <laughs> My daughter wanted to ask this, but she wanted to know what Rose is made out of. Oh, uh, uh. Well, sugar and spice. Yeah, sugar and spice. And uh, for a child, I'm not going to say what I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> I was like, F T. No, no, no. Uh, Do you mean I think Rose is. Oh, let, me, let me see if I, it's easier to come up with it if I ask Rose. Oh, I guess I made a good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Moxie. Uh, uh, a lack of uh, personal awareness that I think is a skill in this day and age, uh, a determination, and a lust for life. <laughs> I, also, I also want to say thank you to Christine McConnell for being yet another um, feminine icon in the horror genre. Um, I would even put you next to Elvira, to be honest, for the new generation. My daughter absolutely loves you. <laughs> So much. Did you actually want to know the materials, or was oh, yeah, that? Yeah, no, she's a skunk and a raccoon. Yes, so we wanted we wanted to know that. I yeah, what parts is she made? Skunk, skunk and a raccoon, 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 and a possum, and a possum, and a four. And a four. Okay. <laughs> well, she lost her hand in a garbage disposal accident. We're just trying to get some delicious garbage out. <laughs> so, Christine, the All right, uh, let's see over here. We have to over here. Anyone over here? Hey, big All right, 
right, you right with the bow, right there. Hi. All the, well, Hello. the guy with the mic's there. Can you hear me? Microphone's coming. Uh, give me a mic. She's yeah. running. <laughs> this is way out there. Are you up uh, for taking this show live on the road? Oh, on oh, wow. Wow. That's really a question for you. Do you want to travel around the country? No. <laughs> I, I will say there there is video footage from like that special event you held before the show came out for press in oh, which yeah. you and Rose did like some live improv Q and A and it was just so funny. Well, this is the thing about Rose is Rose weighs like forty pounds yeah. and the way she's built it all rests on my thumb. So which is why Rose's mouth is always like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it won't work. She was yeah. hit by a truck. So. so for everybody, well. Nick would be like, Ugh, on stage, I'm gonna hold her up for that long. She'd have to have like real quick bits and then have to leave and go run an errand. <laughs> just be in the garbage, just yeah. throwing garbage. I had to sit in a chair all day. I know. And he had to cover his... Yeah, I had to cover. My controllers made noise. I had a microphone on my forehead, so... If you came to set, you'd see this weirdo sitting way away from the set with the blanket on his lap. <laughs> That was in between takes. Oh. <laughs> that means he's playing video game, kids. He's playing on his. Yeah. We're done. We gotta go. All right, one more question. All right, uh, Michael spotted somebody. Which young man? There. Uh, you wave, wave, wave. Yeah, wave. Okay, we'll go to you because Michael. His arm up for every question. Better be a good question. Good. It better be really good. <laughs> better be a good question. No pressure. Last question. Guys, is a favorite experience during the first season? That's a good question. Should we go down the line? You start? Oh, I don't want to start. I gotta think about it. Let's start at Um When I was playing Evie and I was being dragged away, um, at the end I just get to go, I'll be back, Christy! I'll be back! <laughs> and then Christine was actually uh, getting her hair and makeup done, so she wasn't there. And she said she just heard this woman screaming, <laughs> And it was so fun to lose my mind, but it was also fun to just like, scary. Yeah, to, like, quiet, oh. scream And you scary. really fought, you were really fighting. I know, I actually like, almost hurt my wrist. I was like, ooh, don't. Yeah, well, the PA and I were holding you, and you were really fighting, so we were really, we yeah. couldn't let you go. So uh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was method. Favorite. Just bringing Christine out. By screaming right now. I loved it. One of my favorite moments, I was kind of tucked away into the back of the sound stage. My area was always an explosion of fabrics and ribbons and hay bales. And when Christine was in the red gown, I remember her walking back to my area and plopping down on hay bales in that gown and just being like, can I just hang out back here for a while? And I thought to myself, how crazy is set right now if this is where she's coming to find solitude? I mean, it's a Jim Henson show. This is a Jim Henson creature shop show. I, growing up and being like a huge fan of everything that Henson's done and, and the puppetry and everything, getting to come into this and going into the creature shop to try on Edgar and get these fittings done while all these amazing fabricators around are around me, like working on this show, working Building on- Building Dark Crystal. Yeah, when, when I was there, Dark Crystal was being done. So I was surrounded by not only stuff on Christine McConnell, but Gelflings and you know all these characters in that show too. So just being able to come to set every day and be a part of like this amazing team of voice actors and puppeteers and getting to make this Henson property was incredible. I mean, this is like this. This is a this is a total dream show to be able to work on, be a part of. Um, I think my favorite moments in the show was when we we'd be in a setup and then we we would have shot all the scripted material and then Kirk would say, "All right, what do you got?" And we would come up with new stuff and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it fun, you kid. Um, <laughs> I and mean, I would be there with my phone looking up Egyptian references to make sure I wasn't violating something or it was somewhat accurate. So things like snitches get gutted and sacrificed to Anubis, stuff like that. Like just waiting for my chance to like, alright, let me polish this thing a little bit for you, Kirk. So I like the improv a lot in the show. For me, I would say I have two moments that really stand out to me as being special from this experience. And um, the first one was, I had never seen the set until the set was done. Um, 
and I, they granted me access, like I think it was the night before we started shooting, and I was able to go into this sort of darkened sound stage and see what Darcy and her crew had created. And it was this very surreal, like, oh my God, like my name is attached to this. Like, it was very weird, and I wish everybody could experience something so strange and cool. It's my favorite memory. Um, and then the next one is, I'm sitting at the table with the rose, and we've got the basket for Mr. Ketchum right there. And I'm like beaming about it and so proud, and she's like, you know, you can buy all this stuff. <laughs> you can buy all this stuff. <laughs> my you like to play the reality, like, you know you're killing yourself for a job. Yeah. So. It's also the only time in the show that Christine looks like she's going to commit violence. <laughs> yes, to Rose, that's true. So you acting, really, you were great. Uh, for me, it was the whole making of the show. I hadn't made a show where it was so much my input since Dinosaurs. So to meet Christine, who was the 800 pound fairy godmother, I'm gonna say gorilla, because that would be take that offense. Um, like it. Uh, to, to work with Christine and make a show that we turned out our sensibilities were pretty close, yeah. where nobody was going, oh, you can't say that, take out the ball gag, or she can't be a disgusting trash creature, and having amazing uh, performers who just take what we're writing and make it ten times funnier. I, the whole thing was really a joy, and, and, and I, there's, not, there's so many moments where I would say the whole, the whole thing really was, was great. I think maybe the, the final edits when you're watching, when, well, today, I think today's my favorite moment, because people really liked it, and you know, we never know. We just, this is a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, this time we ask that you gather your belongings and planes exit so we can prepare the theater for our next presentation. If you plan on attending our next production, you will need to exit the theater and re-enter when doors open for the next group.